Stephen now. Alana Harris is here. She works for Campus Recreation as the Associate Director, and she is talking to us about wellness and well-being. So let's all welcome her to the Race Park. Hey everyone. Um, as Emily said, my name is Alana Harris. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I work in campus recreation as an associate director for assessment and student wellness. Um, before I start to talk about the topic here today, a lot of what we're talking about today um, is very individual um, focus and led, and I think it's important that you know a little bit about me so that you know the lens through which I view wellness and well-being. So, as I said, uh, I use my pronouns. I'm also an adjunct faculty um, in kinesiology and community health. I did my PhD in lifestyle behavior change at the U of I. Um, ILL. I my yes. Um, and so today, when I'm speaking with you, I'm speaking through uh, both theory and lived experience. I'm a mom, I'm an exerciser, I'm a gardener. Um, there's a lot about me that's informed what my personal well-being and wellness looks like. And so today, I hope that um, some of you may be at wellness experts. There may be wellness and well-being experts amongst us. Um, I want it to be conversational, so if you have something to add, something to share, in a space like this, um, it's lovely when folks can share their lived experience too, because what I have to say may not hit with every single person in the space, and it should because we're all individuals. So after our session today, you should have a further sense of clarity on um, how wellness, well-being, and self-care are interconnected, but also what, what makes them different. You will be familiar with the Student Affairs Wellness Model. So campus recreation is a health and well-being auxiliary underneath Student Affairs at the U of I. Um, you will participate in self-reflection activity on your personal wellness and well-being. So, I think there's lots of presentations on wellness and well-being where they simply dump a whole bunch of information on you, like a bucket of info, and they hope one thing sticks. I think the best way to receive information is to see yourself first, and then to connect to the information that makes sense for you. So that's not overwhelming, but it's very bespoke and tailored to what your needs are. So uh, that's what that reflection is geared towards, and there's lots of examples of those out there. You'll have ideas about exploratory opportunities in campus recreation and on the U of I campus after we talk about this wellness wheel and the dimensions of wellness. Um, so that again, well-being and wellness are a journey of self-discovery. If you don't know yourself well, it's hard to connect to what's going to foster those things in yourself. So when we talk about wellness, it describes a healthy lifestyle beyond acute illness. It refers to a state of physical health in which people have the ability and energy to do what they want to do in life without chronic suffering. So it's big, right? It's a lot of things. But where wellness and well-being differ is that wellness um, is strongly connected to objective measures, um, to indicators of health. So things like your BMI, your resting heart rate, your blood pressure, things that are connected to you being able to live a healthy lifestyle. It's largely supported through habits of eating, physical activity, quality of sleep, these really kind of objective things, things you can measure. When we talk about well-being, um, well-being has kind of, uh, well, it has emerged more, um, and you hear it more, um, I don't want to say it's a more sexy term, but you're hearing well-being more often uh, in social media, and just everywhere. Well-being encompasses more of a broader or a holistic dimension of a well-lived life. Um, and although there are other definitions, it's been suggested that following areas can influence thriving or flourishing. The terms thriving and flourishing are italicized here because we're seeing them emerge more in the literature uh, and measuring um, what is well-being, measurements of personal thriving and flourishing, living your best life. So you're here today, um, you're fostering your career well-being, right? You're here because you're interested in how does my career factor into me thriving and flourishing as an individual. Social factors influence this as well. So having a community that you feel connected to, uh, that you feel a part of, a sense of belonging, um, also has been social, uh, closely correlated. Financial well-being, well, career, 
well-being and financial well-being are very closely tied to one another. Your physical well-being, that's my jam, coming up through kinesiology, doing a PhD in kinesiology. Physical well-being was the avenue through which I learned about well-being overall. So you can hear me connect back on a high level and give examples to how physical well-being uh, influenced all other dimensions of my personal overall well-being. Um, more and more, um, we're hearing uh, Jedi or diversity, equity, and inclusion um, being uh, top of conversation around well-being. Um, well-being and your identity, your culture, ethnicity, who you are as an individual, and how you show up in the world. This is where it's factored in um, to your overall uh, thriving and flourishing. Less in the arena of wellness and more here, how you show up. So I have a visual here. Um, our dimensions of wellness, I'll go into those dimensions and the constructs that influence them, um, are very closely and synergistically affected by one another. You can see um, I've got a clearly athletic individual here um, with their head down at the side of the pool and really drawing attention to one dimension of your well wellness can be uh, very developed. So the example here being physical, this person has spent a lot of time and energy on developing their physical wellness, but more and more uh, we're seeing athletic populations, varsity athletes experiencing um, mental health challenges. So you can see by this example that you can be doing really well in one dimension, but if we're not thinking of all of those dimensions and how they influence and impact one another, we're doing a disservice to ourselves and the people in our community and around us. So, we need to be aware of what, how wellness is only one part of a thriving life. It's an inside job. Um, I put this in quotes here because I get a lot of questions around wellness and well-being. What do I need to do? What do I need to eat to be well? Well, obviously nutrition goes into your body, it's a factor in your overall wellness and well-being, but we need to explore ourselves and do some self-reflection to be able to identify on that wellness wheel or in those dimensions of wellness, what am I doing really well? And what areas are there for me to improve upon? And it might look different than if you were to look to your right or left than what the person beside you is working on, and it's okay. It's perfectly fine. We all have different areas of strength and different areas of potential for development. So it's important that you take time to listen to your body and mind. And I know a lot of you, I got a little bit of information about the group um, beforehand, um, that a lot of you are in startups and technology, and I'm sure you're familiar with uh, the emergence of uh, tracking in terms of technology and app-based around uh, mood meters and activity trackers and all of this, all these resources that put our well-being in front of us. But incorporating things into your life that allow you to, to reflect, to listen to your body, to cue you to action around areas that need improvement. You want to take small steps to goal setting. Have you done any workshops on setting SMART goals or heard of those things? So short-term and long-term goals. Um, we need to feel successful that we're making steps towards those longer-term goals. So putting things in place that allow you to track progress and give yourself opportunities to celebrate those smaller successes along the way to a larger one. You want to create a positive environment where you can succeed. So. Um, I've heard this term, I'm a gardener, uh, something I discovered during the pandemic, uh, that another way I serve my well-being is through gardening. And they say, um, you need to grow where you're planted. Well, I know there are some plants that just don't grow in full sun. Hostas, they don't like full sun. They need a space where they get some part shade or full shade in order to be their best selves. So it is critical that you find a space and a place that allows you to be your best self. That you're not changing yourself to fit, to fit into an environment or a space, but to recognize those places and that, that make you your best. 
Include support from others. So you obviously have a community here in Research Park. Um, you've selected small groups or tables to sit at. Probably people in this space who you consider part of your support network. It's critical that you have folks who you can relate to, bounce ideas off of, off of feel connected to, that you can lean into when things get a little tough. You need to be compassionate to yourself as you go and start again whenever you need to. So I'm going to come back to physical activity. How many times have y'all set a New Year's resolution around going to do something at the gym or join a gym January 1st? Anybody? Okay, sir, you actually represent 85% of the population. So I don't know what y'all, the rest of you are doing on January 1, but most people are setting physical activity or exercise, a lifestyle behavior change goals on January 1st, or starting them. How many people actually adhere? So he's shaking his head. So he, 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 he has let go of his January 1st goal. And again, he represents 90% of folks who start the first time. How many times does it normally take before you make a habit of it, for you to start something and stop? So start that gym membership and stop. How many times? A few years. <laughs> a few years, thank you. It's usually 10 times before you make a, an actual commitment and sustain that behavior for six plus months. What's most important here, it's not to make you sad that you, that you didn't achieve it, it's you've got to start again. You've got to connect, take the time to reflect about why it didn't work, what you can do differently, and try again. Revisit those goals. Remember that well-being is our natural inclination. We want to be well. It's human nature to be well. So seek out those things that foster your well-being. Again, I put savor and celebrate your successes because I feel like as a, as a population, we don't do a great job of this. We're always, what's next? What's going to make me happy that's outside of this moment? But take the time to celebrate. You're here. You just, didn't, you just nourished your body with an awesome lunch. Celebrate that nutritious victory when you leave here. Self-care is something I'm hearing a lot more about. Uh, again, I see it in social media rounds, on, on television, everywhere. Um, need to do self-care. What are some things that you all um, think of as self-care? Mindful meditation. Mindful meditation, that's an evolved response. Yes. Anything not school-related. Okay, anything not school-related. Anything else that you do for self-care or that you've heard others do for self-care? Taking a walk. Taking a walk. Mm -hmm. Physical activity. And actually, if you want to change your mood state, acutely the, the most impactful thing you can do is move your body. So if you're, if you're having a tough day, literature supports, physical activity, then antidepressant medications, but physical activity <laughs> first, giving to others, same thing. Anything else for self care that you can share? Decluttering my room. Pardon? Decluttering my room. Oh, decluttering my room for environmental wellness. Nice. A lot of things that I'm seeing are go to a spa, get a massage, get my nails done, buy myself a new outfit. These types of things are acute mood fixes, very brief, very short term, not long lasting effects. And if you are doing things like this, um, you're working to try to escape from a space or an environment that isn't fostering your well being. So we talk about self care. I love that you talked about mindfulness and meditation. That's a great practice. Um, to take care of your mindset on a daily basis. I love that you talked about exercise, habitual physical activity. What about setting up boundaries in your life, relationship-wise? There's someone who is in your life who isn't um, showing you respect or uh, listening to your boundaries about how frequently you want to communicate. That's self-care, establishing well-defined boundaries and communicating those in your workspace. I don't know about you, but I have windows of certain types of work that I am better at at different times of the day. I am a morning person, so if you ask me to do 
things that require significant amount of creative and uh, focused thought at 3 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you're not going to get my best work. For, and it's going to be frustrating to me. And it's not going to foster my self-care. I schedule my thinking blocks in the morning, and I schedule those redundant activities that let me wrap up my day at 3 and 4 o'clock. So things that are automated processes that I have to do. But you need to know yourself and your productivity and how you work. If I need to be super creative, I do that walk that you described right beforehand. We know literature supports these increased blood flow, increased cognition when we move our body. So if you've got to do a creative uh, brainstorming, uh, think tank with a group, do a little walk beforehand or do a walking meeting. Try and see if that works. You don't know until you try it yourself. But those are examples of, of, of self-care practices that I don't think automatically come to mind, in, in, especially in workspaces. Let's clear up one misconception. I think it's so important. Self-care is not synonymous with self-indulgence or being selfish. It's survival. It's a basic, fundamental thing that we need to build, build skills around in order to be our best selves and to be our best selves for and with others. So the World Health Organization defines self-care as the ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health, and to cope with illness and disability with or without the support of healthcare providers. So um, self-care, uh, more and more, I think especially around the pandemic, folks leaned into mental health resources or needed to tap into those on a much higher level. And uh, working one-on-one -on -one with a counselor, working in small group uh, counseling settings, I think we saw, I know, statistically, we saw a surge in the need for those resources. I think it's important for folks to explore what works best for them, and sometimes those are things that we need, especially when we have trauma, like a pandemic in our lives. We need more of those resources, but is that the answer for, our, for all of us? Not necessarily, and again, for self-care, you need to explore what works for you, um, what resources you need to be your best self. So I talked about these, so I'm gonna jump through them. I'm gonna jump into our wellness model so that you have um, an idea about how um, objective well-being um, looks on our campus in student affairs. So in this model, you can see it's an eight-dimension model. Um, each of the dimensions are represented by the outermost circle here. So you can see intellectual, environment, financial, spiritual, vocational, emotional, social, and physical. Um, the representation of each of these units bleeding into each other is intentional. Every dimension in the model has impact and influence over another part. So, um, like I mentioned in the photo earlier, I can be exceptionally developed in my physical dimension, but still be below uh, the threshold of health or well-being or wellness in one of those other dimensions. When I say environmental, what kinds of things come to mind in terms of constructs or actions that would influence your environmental dimension. Having like a, I would say like one of the office space where you work at and having like a separation of this is my relaxed space, so like your bedroom and this is where I get work done and not make some like So you've given a couple examples there. When I come right down to a health ergonomics of your space with your vision, um, absolutely. You've also talked about um, social, emotional, and vocational, which is your workplace wellness and separating those things so that you can calm and relax your mind between them. Those are all examples. Sustainability is in our next 150 plan at the University of Illinois and a focus for us. So um, we have, when you think of the social ecological model, you think of the world, you think of our community, and you think of this smaller group all having influence over one another. Those are environments at three different levels, um, and they impact one another. So yes, all examples of environmental. 
I think physical folks uh, jump right away into physical activity, especially because I've been talking about that quite a lot, so it's in your mind. But wellness is a continuum, and exercise and performance fitness would be kind of at one end of the continuum, and is at one end of the continuum. And the other end would be physical activity, so your daily steps, I'm counting mine now. Um, it would also be making sure that you're going for an annual physical, getting blood work done, preventative care, um, eye exams, dental, those are all examples of impacting your physical dimension of wellness. Spiritual, I think folks um, will sometimes think that that has, has to do with religious affiliation, but for me personally, there are elements of my faith that fit there, but also I talked about being a gardener, um, my cup is filled when I put my hands in the dirt. Don't look at my nails. I was gardening last night, did the best I could, but um, I didn't realize that until the pandemic happened. My background, as I mentioned, is all physical activity, exercise, lifestyle, behavior, change work. During the pandemic, I couldn't do that as much, and I couldn't do it in a structured way where we would exercise together and socialize. I couldn't do that. I did my master's in horticulture online so that I would have a community, and I became a master gardener. I started gardening to be outside with other people, and I realized, whoa, this is another tool for the tool belt. So when I can't do physical activity, I have another resource that fills me up the same way, and I, and I feel like it's more spiritual connection. It's physical, but it's spiritual with something bigger than myself, nature. Weird, right? Something I never thought would happen, but my message there is it's great if you find one tool, and for a long time, physical activity and exercise was my tool, but if you get injured or you're put in a situation where you can't use that tool, you need to have some other tools. So continue to explore try, be open to, see what else works for you. So I put up a QR code here, you're welcome to take a photo of it and do the little reflection quiz, but you don't have to use our example from Campus Recreation. Basically, I was giving so many presentations to groups about wellness and well-being, and students were asking me, what resource, what thing is going to make me well or foster my well-being? And it's so individualized. And even in the morning tomorrow versus the end of the day tomorrow, it'll look different for what's going to foster your wellness or well-being. For me, coffee in the morning, fostering my well-being. Uh, physical activity right after lunch. So it's going to be different. What this quiz lets you do is kind of zone in on that moment. You answer uh, several different questions under each of your dimensions of wellness, and then it will make some suggestions. Have you tried this? What about this? Is this the only tool out there? No, there's tons of tools. I know the Counseling Center has something called the Mood Meter. I'm sure you're all aware of different apps that ask you um, about questions or give you suggestions about things that you could do or improve on, areas. I also like to highlight strengths always. So when you complete this, it's, you're doing really well in this dimension right now. What about this? And give you a few actionables. So this is available anytime you want to use it, if you like it as a resource. Um, but there are lots of things out there. And I encourage you, um, as part of um, your self-reflection, to do something um, at different points throughout your day to just kind of check in. Where am I? What could I add? What could I do differently? Um, could I adjust the lighting in my space to help with my physical well-being? Would getting up and doing a physical activity break separating from this work I'm doing right now help me, right? So in terms of wellness and well-being actions, so out of that reflection, if you uh, were identified as having an opportunity for development and environmental well-being, what are some things around us in our campus community that could address or assist you in exploring your personal environmental well-being? campus recreation if you've been in and some of you have every the building has a feel it's an environment with lots of light with exercisers people who have come 
for wellness and well-being, so you're surrounded by other folks who are trying to do work in that area, and there's an energy that comes with that. But even more specifically, adventure recreation has a specific kind of community. The folks who are in that space, um, a lot of gardeners, I, I found a connection with the gardening community in adventure recreation, folks who are interested in nature, um, folks who are interested in taking that skill of climbing into outdoor spaces, it's an opportunity to foster your environmental wellness. McKinley Stress Educators talked about um, space being conducive to different types of activities or separating your work from home. They do some tremendous workshops. If you haven't already had them here or seen any of their workshops, they talk about setting up your space, um, your environment for personal success. Um, aquatics, I don't know if you've been to the outdoor pool. Any folks been to the outdoor pool in Campus Rec? It's got a vibe. In the summertime, music is playing, folks are lounging, some folks are doing laps very seriously and fostering physical, their physical dimension of wellness, but it's a fun and relaxing space. FNS offers ergonomic and occupational health and safety assessments. There are tons of resources. Um, in this space, I always ask folks as well, is there anything that you have found in our, on our campus or in our campus community that's fostered your environmental wellness that you want to share? Uh, the Japanese gardens. <gasps> Nice, the Japanese gardens, especially in the spring, the cherry blossom right, and the magnolias, it's a great, great space. Oh, I love it. We also, in adventure recreation, uh, if you don't have a hammock, uh, we rent those too. So if you want to give it a try before you invest in, in buying a hammock, but there's something special about laying under a canopy of trees in the shade, rocking back the rhythm, rocking back and forth. Are you guys relaxed? We're just going to be talking about that, feeling that vibe. Cool. Social. We have tons of registered student organizations on campus. It's an opportunity to connect with like-minded individuals who might be bringing some other factors that are not like, but opening you to a different way of thinking. Group fitness classes. I know for those folks who were, well, we had one person who said he. He tried January 1st, uh, an exercise program. You're more likely to adhere if you join a group of people and people are expecting you to be there. So group fitness is a great way to do that. Play an intramural. Um, we have lots of variety in intramurals. I remember when I was a college student, it seemed all the intramurals were very competitive and I was trying to get away from that. But now there's all kinds of inner tube water polo, billiards, all, uh, there's a archery uh, tag, all kinds of non-traditional intramurals that get you out trying something new and different that people aren't awesome at. Everyone's a beginner and you can connect with other people. We also offer cooking classes. We have an instructional kitchen over at the ARC and those are open to students, staff, faculty, and the greater community. So if you're interested in making a meal, learning about cuisine from another country and how to prepare it, our sushi classes are very popular. Uh, everyone wants to learn how to make their own sushi. Do y'all have any social groups here in Research Park? Any organizations or clubs or lunch? I guess this is a, a social piece that you've decided to do on your lunch hour. They do that yoga. Nice. Nice. Over the summer, Perfect. So getting people outside of the space. <laughs> Getting people outside of the spaces that they recognize each other in and see them in a different light, it's cool. Emotional, um, this is becoming more in tune with your feelings and thoughts. Um, try daily journaling, so you've heard about, I'm sure Oprah Winfrey's uh, gratitude journal every day. There's something to be said for taking a moment to, we've all got goals. You've got career goals, you've got aspirations, things that you're working towards, but it's also wonderful to reflect on where you come from. When you think back to, we were just talking about our kids going to kindergarten this year. When you think about kindergarten and all the experiences and who you've become since then, take a minute and reflect, even after this summer, your internships or your employment, what have you learned? How have you grown as a human? Um, take the time to reflect on those things. We have uh, several other resources um, 
here for emotional, the thing I want to hit on the most is that getting to know yourself piece. Anybody ever done the personality inventories, um, maybe strengths quest? Got a hand up? Any any different one? Um, we did at my old workplace. We did the MJ MJ type, and then we did the strengths finder. Um, hours I can recommend us do a lot of tests just to see like the on that. Well, and there's a lot of validating tools um, that you can use to kind of uh, be more introspective and to get an idea about what makes you similar to the folks that you're working with or similar to people in your life and then those things that make you a little bit unique or different and why in certain situations when an information is shared you process it differently or feel differently about it than other folks. I will say um, there's a gentleman who I work with um, in Campus Rec, I will not name names, but we have very different work styles. And I find myself get frustrated when we are in meetings together because we just can't seem to get on the same page. And it wasn't until we did a workspace personality inventory and you know when they're like, if you're this color, go to this side of the room. And if you're this color, go over here. And what are some of the, and he was always across the room. Every, everything we did, always across the room. And, and it brought a new appreciation for difference makes us stronger because it gives you different perspective. And the reason we were kind of always at odds was because we were very different in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Um, but I encourage you to do some of those things um, so that you get a better understanding of yourself and others and how you present in your personal life and in your workspace. We have a lot of free ones. Strengths Finder is done through the Leadership Center on campus. Um, so if you want to take a workshop and do one of those inventories, they have them there too. Financial, um, I'm sure, I think I was told, a lot of you are young professionals and uh, financial is going to be a dimension that you're probably working on on a really high level at this point in your life. Um, and I would suggest that you tap into the resources that are available to you in the community. So Illinois Extension, anyone ever worked with Illinois Extension, financial extension before? Kathy Sweedler is the director of financial um, assistance in, in their office. They offer tons of programs. Uh, Money Mentors is a really great one where um, students go through training and they're predominantly from the School of Business um, in finance. Um, and they provide mentorship or support to peers around their finances. It's totally confidential with that individual, but I think it's a great resource to tap into an expertise of a peer on campus and, and use a resource that's free. They have webinars, if you prefer not to do that face-to-face -face stuff, they have tons of workshops, uh, webinars, and a newsletter that you can pull on, and again, all free. Vocational, um, anyone? use the term or heard the term vocational? All right, I see some nods. I appreciate that. We were intentional around the use of the term vocational because occupational ties so closely to only the job that you have and are paid to do. Whereas vocational incorporates your civic engagement, your hobbies, your philanthropy, and your work because all of those things influence your well-being, not just what you get paid to do. So I'm sure folks right away when they think of occupational wellness, their mind goes to our career center on campus, and yes, they provide a lot of resources in terms of resume reviews, coaching, mock interviews, but the Office of Civic Life on campus is a, is a resource I suggest people take a look at. There are tons of philanthropic or volunteer opportunities that allow you to explore some of the things that will fill your cup and even might help you with your career. Um, I remember when I was in my undergraduate degree, I thought physical therapy was what I wanted to do. That was it. And it wasn't until um, I took a class where I had a required internship where I worked in campus recreation doing health and wellness program outreach I was like, whoa, that's my jam. That's what I want to do. Um, 
And, it, and we need to expose ourselves to different things and not just be kind of one track. Taking classes outside of your area of study, who thought I would take a master's in horticulture after I had gone all the way through in applied health sciences and, and kinesiology, but I, I did, and it brought a lot of joy. Um, with undergrad students, I also encourage them to get hobbies and personal interests outside of their area of study, uh, just to diversify their experience. Does that mean that my time's up? It's starting to dim, so I can get off the stage. Uh, physical, come to Campus Rec. Obviously, I'm going to be an advocate for coming into Campus Recreation and exploring the programming and services that we offer. But for folks who don't have the time, you can get everything you need in nature. I encourage you to do something that tracks where you're at to see if you are meeting health guidelines, which is a, equivalent to approximately 10,000 steps daily. I wear this because I have a tendency when I'm doing work to get stuck in a zone. And then I'll be like, whoa, five hours just went by and I never got off of my chair. This is just a reminder for me to move my body because it helps with that work I'm doing when I'm sitting in my chair. Um, so just putting cues to action. I also have my vitamins on my desktop um, to remind me. It's something I'm working on right now. It's a wellness goal, making sure that I take my vitamin each day. Try something new and schedule it. So if physical activity is something you're working on, put it on your calendar the same way as you schedule a meeting with each other for work. Schedule physical activity like it's part of your job because it is. Taking care of your body and taking care of your well-being allows you to be successful in all the other areas too. Spiritual, we, op we opened a reflection room in our space which is uh, for mindfulness, meditation, and prayer. Um, and more of these are opening across campus all of the time. Uh, the OIR office, Office of Inclusion and Intercultural Relations, offers workshops and speakers. Um, so things around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Also the Religious Workers Association has done some awesome workshops. And I got to learn about things that I had no idea about. Um, helping, I opened the reflection room in campus recreation. And it was attending a workshop at OIR uh, from Muslim students to learn about what their prayer schedule looks like and why they pray and how they pray that informed that work in my life. Intellectual, um, we offer um, wellness workshops in Campus Rec, Craner Center of the Arts, uh, Campus Well is an educational resource, and this QR code is to that free um, content generator, so if you are looking for something to incorporate, you're not sure what uh, area of wellness you want to address, you just know, I want to spend some time on this, that link would take you to sign up to the newsletter where it just pops in your inbox every morning and it's a different dimension of wellness and gives you some ideas about things you could incorporate in your day or do. Um, stay in touch. Uh, when I come and give these presentations, it's one of the favorite, my most favorite parts of my job is helping others to find what serves them, um, their wellness and their well-being. Um, I've left my business cards with Emily in case um, you want to talk about anything later. Um, Campus Recreation, you can follow us on any of our social media accounts which are listed across the bottom here. Active Illini is our app um, and it has registration for all of the things we do. Um, and information about upcoming uh, events, programs, and services that we offer. But I'm going to stick around for questions if you have any. Um, but otherwise, I want you to enjoy the rest of your, your I think you have 15 minutes left um, to foster your well-being with a walk or anything else that does it for you. But I'm going to stick around. <laughs>